Building the Board. Um, before we get started, I'd like to remind everyone that this is a City Council meeting and not a Town Hall meeting. We've got a lot of business to cover and there will be time for comments on the situation with the buildings closing, but we will hold those until new business at the end of the meeting. So, just so everyone's aware. And I would ask that you refrain from side conversations during the meeting. Sister Catherine. God of freedom, beauty, truth, and goodness, we are your beloved sons and daughters, and we believe that it is your deepest desire that all creation know abundant life. We raise our voices in prayer, in times of joy, in times of sorrow, and in times of tribulation. Calm the anger and the fear that may be present within us as we look forward to the days ahead. Bring light and reason and calm to our time together. Do not allow us to be disturbed or to be at unrest because you, as our God and Father, will bring us to a joyful completion. We ask for the spirit of wisdom, for a spirit of knowledge, for a spirit of courage, a spirit of mercy, a spirit of understanding. Let us be mindful of those with the greatest need and look for the betterment of others before ourselves. Push us forward for what is right and just and most advantageous and unite us all in a prayerful solution to this prayer and to every prayer we say amen. amen. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Additions to the agenda. Um, currently I have one under citizen comments. Are there any other additions to the agenda? Being none, I'd entertain the motion to approve. So moved. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries for a um, citizen comments. Mr. Arpine, I will get to you in just a second. Mr. Wyckoff? It would probably be better if you could get a little closer to the microphones. <laughs> Mr. Whitecock is here this evening on behalf of the IOOF Lodge. For anybody that doesn't know me, my name is Todd Whitecock. I'm a trustee for the St. John Odd Fellows. Uh, like everyone else in town, we were shocked to find out that Billings was moving out of our community. Our first contact with Kroger representative Brian Fulmer was not very productive, however, with the help of the media coverage and Carolyn Dunn, they have returned to us with a better offer. Mm -hmm. On Friday, January 29th, Bill has contacted us. They presented some new possibilities. As, as of this time, we have nothing in writing. The lodge trustees and our legal counsel will continue to be in contact with them and will provide more information when it is appropriate. On behalf of St. John Upfield's Lodge, we would like to thank the following people for contacting Dillons, Congressman <coughs> Mike Pompeo and his staff, Representative Greg Lewis, State Director for Pat Roberts, Chad Tinpe, uh, Stafford County Economic Development Director Carolyn Dunn, Mayor Julian Owens, the City Council, Terry Spradley, editor of the St. John News, and all the citizens that voice their concerns. Once again, we really appreciate everyone that has opened, helping bring this to the attention of the media and the public. We have no further information to give at this time. Thank you, Mr. Whitehall. <laughs> Mr. I believe in your I'm Sid Arthur with BG Consultants out of Hutchinson, and we're doing the design work on the CDBG grant the city has for the uh, first street sidewalk improvement. Uh, you 
packet, I believe you have a set of the preliminary plans that we have um, outlined for this. This is basically a 60 to 70 percent uh, progress set, so these aren't, aren't final plans. There's still a couple of loose ends, a couple of them I hope we can uh, resolve this evening. But uh, to give you a uh, better update, uh, we're going to try to have as your March uh, first meeting the uh, final plans and specifications for your approval. And at that point in time, we'll uh, ask you to set a letting date to, to let the work uh, sometime in April. And then by uh, in May, we should have the work under contract then. So that's our, that's our schedule at this point in summer construction. Uh, the way the grant was proposed to the state is that the city was going to provide services in kind for uh, about 10% offset of the uh, total grant award. And that work was uh, identified as some of the construction activities. We're still in the ballpark for the same type of uh, balance of 10% of the work for some of the construction activities done by the city. But we're going to present to you uh, with the bid as the alternates for the contractor to do all the work. And then you can see what those cost savings would be if the city were to do it or if you just were to pay for it. Uh, we don't want to put you in a bind where it actually costs you more to do it because you have to rent equipment and so on, where a contractor can do it cheaper once you can rent the equipment. So we want you to be able to see that uh, before going into construction. One of the items that still needs to be resolved, uh, the plans you have are all the first street alignment, but there's a block on the road from first to second uh, that we also are uh, looking at doing. I just have this one sheet I'll hand out showing you that all the other sidewalk is pretty much being placed up against the right-of-way. Uh, we try to keep it to the point where it's, it's fairly standardized across the city. Your, your sidewalk is at the right-of-way line. But along this particular stretch, uh, there's no sidewalk and there's <coughs> buildings that are fairly close to the right-of-way that we'd actually possibly go up against if, uh, if we were to maintain that same policy. So we're building just being uh, seven to eight foot away from the back curve for the majority of the street and then to divert over to the right way line as we get to the intersection on, on first street. So if you want to take a look at that, if that, if that seems okay to uh, to uh, see that way, that's how we'll do that block. And, and this way we can also miss some of the trees that are already there for landscape purposes and not to remove anything. And then uh, we do have a couple of locations where uh, due to the grades and due to the ditch that we're uh, up against uh, on portion of the sidewalk, we do encounter locations where we would have work that would go off, off the right away. Uh, one particular point we have to uh, transition along the ditch where a concrete flume carries the drainage to the street and in that particular case we're going to need to uh, Parallel the sidewalk with it, but we should actually go on private property, so we'll need to acquire an easement from a corner lot to, to accommodate that. And that would be reflected on sheet number six, continual uh, court of that northeast corner of that. We do, we do have to cut across the uh, private property there. Any other instance would be, uh, because of some of those grades that are occurring against the uh, right-of-way line, as we flatten it out to the sidewalk, we may be needing to do some grading back into the property. We would do that with rights of entry, but not necessarily uh, an easy one. It'd just be a, a, a flatter slope up against the sidewalk when it's all said and done. So it wouldn't require that there be permanent, no, nothing permanent would be built on it, it'd just be a free grading of it, so a right of entry would, would suffice in those instances. We'll draw up those documents and then get with uh, the Dominic addressing them, and the grant administrator will also handle the of those required. And 
wanted to entertain any other questions you might have at this time on it. And to bring your final plan to mind. How many trees do you need to take out of the Two, at least, possibly three. Two on the corner of the Two that are side by side there on the
and approve appropriation ordinance 02 2016 in the amount of $106,192.26. Is there any discussion? And entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Chief Sanders. Um, you guys had asked um, a couple of meetings ago to set up a meeting with Greg Wright to talk about the alternate energy contract. So um, we have set up our initial meeting. I spoke with him, so he is open to do that. So I just need you guys to set that up. So would you guys like to have it? You guys wanted to do a special meeting. Session. To discuss non-elected personnel, to discuss the review of two individuals and discuss possible wage increases for those individuals, to include council, mayor, um, city superintendent, city clerk. I, I 
guess into the fall or the, or the course and, and, and Mark's question, I did talk to uh, Sid before he left the BG consultants about um, what it would cost to have somebody evaluate the structural integrity of that building. Um, there's been some thought that the city could move the order of the process to uh, have it hit down, but he would think it would cost somewhere around $1,500 to $2,000. say that I think none of us want to really impede on anybody's right to do what they want to do with them, as far as uh, smoking is or tobacco is concerned. Uh, but I do think that we need to really do something as far as making it safe health-wise for those community members that don't smoke and some of our children. But like I said, the last thing I want to do is impede on someone's freedom to I just think we're going to have a really big problem in the city square. Well, I think that I agree. I think that that's something that we're going to have a hard time trying to enforce. You know, some of these other ones I don't see a problem with it. Uh, but I mean, we also need to get with Nick because Nick did say that he put the signs up for Cornwall Park and Fall Down. Are we paying for the rest or is he paying for all of them? No, he'll pay for all of them. Anywhere we decide to put them? Mm hmm.
Solid waste ordinance. In your package, you guys should have a revised solid waste ordinance copy. You guys asked last meeting for us to take out the one sentence about the billing, and then there was the whole question: Is everyone going to get billed, even if they get to cut their trash collected, or not? So, so it's up to you guys to for your eyes. Essentially says that, that this is costing the city X number of dollars a month in order to defray the cost to 
city, the city charges, households, this amount of money charges. So you're putting in the charge costs inside the ordinance. And by doing that, what you're saying is regardless of whether you take trash service or not, your household charge is charged this amount of money for trash service. Stafford County has signed with Liberty National and Maxwell has signed. All of them get that discount card, even if you don't sell one, even if no one signs up for the insurance, they all get a discount card. Is this something the council wants to consider adding to the benefits package for staff, being that there's no cost to the city? If the employee wanted it, I'd say let them have it. Okay. New business. Dylan's closing. Um, I've got currently I've got three people signed up that have requested to speak. I think that's where we'll start. Um, Barb Graves. Yes, my question is just exactly what has transpired from this? Where are we at? And are our own elderly being taken care of? Are there needs being met? Or is there something more that needs to be done? As far as where we're at, Dylan's closes is Saturday. Um, the lodge was here earlier this evening to give a statement about where they're at in negotiations with Kroger. And it, it, I mean, that's very much all in limbo. One of the things um, on this new business agenda item is transportation. And that is to discuss setting up a bus that will go to Paul's for those who need to grocery shop. Um, we may also discuss the possibility of a trip into Great Bend maybe one week and then maybe in wrap the following week depending on where people have their prescriptions at or if there's a need for that type of thing to go somewhere besides Paul's Um So as far as the elderly are concerned, we're going to do what we can. I do know that there are groups that have developed out there that are communicating with each other to do everything they can. People who are in some of the other communities every day are offering to shop for people on their way home from work, that type of thing. But we are definitely looking at what we're going to be able to do to try and, and fill that gap in the end. Do we have an idea of, I guess, is Dylan going to keep the building wrapped up? Are we going to right have now, place to keep them open? Right now, that is a that is part of the equation that is still very much in limbo. We have to be patient and give the lodge a chance to finish their negotiations before we're going to know. I mean, I think that I can safely say we're not going to have a grocery store in town for at least a month, and probably substantially longer than that. But just on so that optimistic so note. Is the longer that we go, the more people get used to traveling elsewhere. We need to hit while, while it's new, while it's sore, while it's open, before we lose the opportunity to bring it in and have people still. All we can do right now is wait. If if we're looking at having some place for a private enterprise to come in and open a grocery store. And we want to try and give them that opportunity to go into the existing facility. 
we need to give the lodge a chance to try and finish their negotiations. We can't push. We, we have to give them the time to do what they need to do. In the meantime, there's been a committee formed. I know a lot of them are here this evening. They plan on getting together after this meeting to set a time for their next meeting. They'll need to elect a chairman and a secretary so they can keep track of what needs to be going on. As soon as we get that, they get that taken care of, we will do our best to let the community know. Um, make sure we'll make sure it gets posted on the Facebook page for the Save Our Grocery Store. But at, at this point in time, you know, it's in limbo. Carolyn Dunn is going to be the best person to funnel people who are interested in opening a store to. Um, if they, if you know, they're interested in possibly going somewhere else. She's going to have better information than city staff is about what might be available out there in the way of buildings or property or whatever. I do know we have people interested in the community and outside of the community. I personally talked to a lady from Kentucky the other day who was interested in moving her family here and opening up a grocery store. So there are people out there that are looking at our community as some place to come into. That's that's answered a lot. Okay. You need to have a Dollar General out on the highway, and they they stepped up their their different foods. You can get eggs, milk, about anything you need out there at Dollar General right in there. I've had an opportunity to speak with uh, Vicki, the manager of uh, Dollar General, and. Um, right now, her regional manager is looking into bringing a couple of more coolers into Dollar General there and more um, shelving to hold uh, food product. Um, that's kind of up in the air right now. They can't promise anything, but they are looking into it to try and help this community. So we need to try to support them as much as possible, just like we support all of our businesses here in St. John. I've also had an opportunity to speak with some of the uh, grocery committee uh, members, and um, they have uh, agreed to meet at Goodman Library on the 9th of February at 7 p.m. Uh, to try and discuss options that we can look into. So we will try and keep this information flowing as much as possible, and we will get this information out to you through social media, through the newspaper, however we need to. And I'm always available at the library to speak with you if you wish to. Thank you. I think my question was answered, Mayor Owens. I was just concerned about the elderly and the shut-ins uh, with transportation to the grocery store. But thank you. Mr. Crawford. I was just uh, here to reiterate on the opening of the store here in St. John. Um, I had some proposals that I'll discuss with the committee. Uh, Carolyn Dunn is on Facebook that the uh, Dylan's representatives that she's talked to are supposed to provide her with a list of equipment and fixtures they're willing to leave on Friday of this week on the 5th. So Carolyn Dunn should have that list of stuff they're willing to leave this Friday. She has. So again, we need to be patient and give people that are diligently working on trying to resolve the issues some time to be able to do that. So, is there anyone else who didn't sign up who would wish who wishes to speak at this time? Yes. Can we get your name, Can we get your name, please? Darren Mosley. I actually talked to a real estate um, advisor from Kroger and asked him to put an approximate dollar amount on what it would cost to leave all of the fixtures as is. And he gave me a number of three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars. My experience that's astronomically high. He could replace what's in there for around nine hundred thousand. He's putting a brand new price on everything, so if anybody's looking into it like I am, it's good information to know. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Transportation. 
Um, we need to look at developing some type of a bus route. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly we need as far as time, if we need to do it daily, if we need to do it um, three days a week, whatever. Um, we do have several people who have volunteered to drive the bus, um, the city's bus, and I know at least one of them has already checked out one of them. The two individuals I've spoken with um, have been checked out, so the city just needs to, I guess, say that it's available for use and possibly work coordinating with people to get a schedule put in place so that people know what to expect. And then we can kind of hold the people that are using the service and see if there's interest in taking it to break down the crack once a week or whatever. So, Mayor Owens, the Recreation Commission, they're going to talk to their board this Thursday, mm -hmm. and he's planning on proposing a transportation plan for the next meeting. In the meantime, I would ask the community to reach out to the groups that have formed out there. Um, I'm in Stafford every day. I'm more than happy to bring things back for anyone who needs it. My phone number is pretty much out there wherever it needs to be, or you can have the, the individuals who need help contact LaDonna, and I will pick up what I can for people at Falks. Um, again, I know Randy Olive has set up a Facebook page, Neighbors Helping Neighbors, and there's a number of people on there that have volunteered to help, so I think that in the short run, we can get our community taken care of. Um, Mark's already talked about the committee. The discussion on city rates. What are, they, what are we looking at here? Well, it was discussed at the uh, town hall meeting to look at some type of incentives. I don't know if that's something that uh, we need to discuss at this moment, but I mean, right now we're kind of in limbo, so it might be something we can table at a later date. But I think we do need to look into something perhaps to entice someone to come in here. Okay. Yeah, I really, I, I think Greg Wright might have some insight on that when we discuss the rest of the electrical stuff in the other meeting on some different situations we can do for larger businesses in the world. So we will table, table that discussion to the special meeting on the 23rd with Greg Wright to see what we might be able to do. Um, another thing we might be able to look at is um, business license fees, some of those types of things, just as a, as a possible incentive. So, and then Mayor Owens Greg Wright is also looking into seeing with Dylan's closing, they use about 100 kilowatts of electricity. So he's going to try to talk with the West Energy to see if we can lower what we buy to offset. Okay. That's great in the short run, but then we have to renegotiate. He yeah. said that they were renegotiating. Okay. I think the discussion on that should be to give the opportunity to change to uh, talk to bigger negotiations. All right, well, we will table that issue until the 23rd. Um, being no further business, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye.